everyone, and welcome to Xamarin University. My name is Jesse Dietrichson, and in this lightning lecture, we're going to take a look at how we can create extensions in iOS. So we're going to start off by looking at the major concepts of building extensions. After that, we'll switch over to Xamarin Studio and actually build an extension that will display in the notification center. All right, so let's start off with what is an extension? So very simply, an extension allows us to extend the functionality of our application to other applications or the system through what it's called an extension point. So we'll get into more detail with this, but if you look on the right hand side, you can see an example of an extension. So this screenshot is taken from the photos application and you can see I have one photo selected. This is the share menu. So I'm trying to share this picture and you can see in the little dialog pop up, I see Twitter and Facebook. So these are third party applications, but yet I can share my picture to them. So this is a type of extension. The Facebook app is extending its functionality to work with system applications. Also on a side note, extensions are available in iOS 8 and above. All right, so now what are extension points? So an extension point is an area in the system that supports extensions. And on this slide, I've listed a few of them. This is not all of the extension points available. Okay, so now let's go through some of these extensions and see what they're all about. So first up is the today extension point. So this allows us to extend the functionality of our application to the notification center. So when you pull down the notification center and you switch to the today view, you actually can see widgets there. And those widgets are the extensions that are created from the application. So maybe an example of this would be if you have a calendar application, you could have a widget for that that will display in the notification center that will show maybe the events for that day. So next up is the share extension point. And this is the extension point that we just saw a moment ago. This allows us to extend the functionality of our application to other applications that are sharing content. So we saw in the photos application when I wanted to share a photo, Facebook and Twitter came up. And the reason why they came up is because they have extensions for sharing. So if I were to go and tap on Facebook, it would then load the extension that Facebook created to share content. So next up is the photo editing extension. Now this extension allows us to extend the functionality of our application into the built-in photo application. So let's pretend I had an application that modified photos. Maybe it adds a filter, maybe it changes the color, maybe it flips it around. Whatever it's doing, it's modifying a photo. Now this extension would allow me to take that functionality and extend it into the built-in photo application. Now what this allows is if a user is using the built-in photos application, they'll get a list of all the extensions that support editing photos. If I select on one of those extensions, it will load the extension into the photos application so any changes you make are happening from one centralized location. Next up, we have the custom keyboard extension point. And this allows us to replace the iOS system keyboard with a custom keyboard that can be used in all applications. This is actually a very popular extension point and on the App Store, you'll find many custom keyboards available. And lastly, we have the action extension point. And this allows us to extend the functionality of an application by either manipulating or viewing some of the content. So as an example, I have translating a web page. So if I'm in Safari, I could have an action that takes the web page and translates it into a different language, maybe. 
action extension points work very similarly to share extension points. They're actually displayed in the same exact menu. So underneath all the possible destinations to share your content, there's actually a little action sheet that you can see all the different types of actions you can complete. And if your device has an extension that supports an action, it can be displayed there. Okay, so now let's start talking about how we can actually create an extension. Now, when you go to create an extension, you'll find that you need to create two projects. You need to create a container project and an extension project. Now, your container project is your typical application. And sometimes, depending on the extension, this will be used just to explain to your users how to properly install and set up the extension. Now, the extension project is the actual project for your extension, which will define what type of extension you have. So there's one thing you need to know about these projects, and that is the container project needs to reference the extension project. However, in Xamarin 4, we have a new wizard that will actually automate this process. And we'll actually see this in action in our upcoming demonstration. Okay, so another important thing I want to mention is the life cycle of an extension. And as you can see, there's only three states, loaded, executed, and terminated. So when the user tries to activate your extension, it will get loaded in, it will execute whatever code it needs to execute, and then when it's done, it gets terminated. So this is different than a traditional application. There is no suspended state. So just note that your extension will be terminated as soon as it's done. So extensions have to have a way to communicate. And when an extension needs to communicate with the host application, we can do that through the extension context property. Now, when I say host application, that means the application that is starting the extension. So for example, in the photos application, when I want to share to Facebook, I need to be able to send some information to the Facebook extension, like the photo that I'm trying to actually share. So we'll do that through the extension context property. However, I want to mention that there is no communication between the container application and the extension. And remember, the container application is the application that gets shipped with the extension. So they cannot communicate. However, this rule is sort of broken in one situation. If you're using a today extension point, you can actually launch the container application from the extension. And finally, the last thing that I want to talk about before we get to the demo is some of the limitations of extensions. So first is that HealthKit and EventKit UI are not available. Next, we can't use extended background modes while we're using extensions. We can't access the device's camera or microphone. We cannot receive airdrop data. And we cannot use UI action sheets and UI alert view. They are not available. Rather, you have to use UI alert controller. All right, now let's go ahead and jump into a quick demo and create our first extension. All right, so let's start by creating a new solution. And we're gonna start off by creating a single view application. And you can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call this hello extensions. I'm going to click next. You can put wherever you want and click create. So this is a really basic application. So I'm not going to touch this container application. Rather, all the changes will happen in the extension. 
All right, so now let's actually create the extension project. So go to your solution, right click, go to add, add new project. And we want to create an extension. So go to the extension button and click today extension and click next. Now give it a name. I'm going to call it today extension. Now notice this is a new wizard that's available in Xamarin 4. And it allows us to create the extension and connect it into the container application very quickly. So in this section right here, this is where it's actually connecting it to the container and saying, okay, I'm going to connect it to the hello extensions project. That's good. Click next. You can pick your location and click create. So what I want to do is I want to build a very simple extension that will display in the notification center that will allow me to tap a button and it will just keep track of how many times I've clicked that button. So I'm going to go to my storyboard and I want to modify the extension appearance in the notification center. Okay, so here is the actual storyboard and it comes with some built-in text that says hello world. So we'll take this label and we want to build our application. So if you click on it, you'll notice that it has some constraints. So we're going to start off by just removing those constraints. And I want to constrain this to the left-hand side. So I'm just going to shrink this a little bit. And I'm going to constrain it to the left-hand side. So let's do this. Constrain to the bottom and the top. And then I'll let it auto-adjust by clicking the little update frames button and we should be good now it's important that you get the top constraint the bottom constraint and the left constraint you'll find that if you don't constrain all of the sides like that the actual appearance of the extension will look very weird next let's take a button from our toolbox and let's drag that on the right hand side and then we'll constrain this one as well so we'll constrain it to the the right the bottom and the top. Okay, so now we have them both constrained. I'm gonna go ahead and change the text of the button to say click. And update those frames. Okay, so now we have our click button and I'm also going to give my hello world label a name so I'll call it my label and I'll delete the text that's currently in it now. Okay. So now when I click on the button, I want to keep track of how many times I clicked it. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the click button to get the click event. I want to place it right here, hit enter. Now there is my click event. And what I want to do is I'm going to create a counter. So I'm going to say int counter equals zero. And every time I click the button, I'm going to say counter plus plus. I'll add one. And then I'll set the text of my label equal to the counter dot two string. And that's it. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So I'm going to select in simulator. I'll pick the iPhone 5S and I'll click play. Okay, so here is the application. We didn't actually modify the container app. So let's go ahead and hit the home button on this and let's pull down the notification center. And notice how when I scroll down, it says there's one new widget available. I need to actually activate this widget. So I need to click on that and say, yes, I want my today extension to be displayed on the today page. So I'll click the little plus sign and click done. Once I do that, notice how my today extension is displayed and there's my click button. Now, when I click on my click button, notice how it says one, two, three. And as I click it, it keeps count of how many times I clicked it. And that brings us to the end of the lightning lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you ever have any questions, you can email me at jesse.dietrichson at xamarin.com. Once again, thank you very much 
and have a nice day.